After almost six years of Tekken 7 on consoles and multiple updates along the way, it was time for the series to make its way onto the ninth generation of consoles. But how do you follow up the massive success that was Tekken 7? Well, you take everything that it built and make it bigger and better. So here it is, Tekken 8, the game this retrospective series has been building up to. Is it one of the best in the series, or does it fail to capture that old Tekken magic? Well, it might still be a bit too early to tell, seeing as this game is only four months old. But today, of course, I'm looking at Tekken 8. And it's not really a retrospective, it's more like a review. But I don't even like to call it a review in some ways, because I'm not really going in depth on every little thing and trying to critique it. It's just me looking at the game, a game I enjoy and want to talk about. So uh, that's what this video is. I'm going to call it a review, because it's the easiest thing I can call it. But, yeah. Today I'm looking at Tekken 8, the final game in the series, and just a little disclaimer before I start, I'm not going to be talking about the Fight Pass or Tekken Shop or any Season Pass stuff because honestly, I don't really care. Um, I know a lot of people who play Tekken 24-7 and are into the community will probably really have strong opinions on things like that, but for me, I play it for a bit of fun, I play a lot of different games, so when a game like this or Call of Duty or whatever has like season passes and season mode like you know different seasons where they have fight passes and battle passes and all that shit i don't really care about because i don't put much time and effort into one game to care about all them so i'm sorry if you've come here to see someone moan about the fight pass and tech and shop and all that stuff but i'm not going to even mention it because i don't care enough <laughs> i don't really don't care about any cosmetic things or things for your avatar it doesn't bother me so uh, yeah, I'm strictly going to be talking about the base game today, the game that released on January 28th, was it? Was it the 28th? I don't remember. But um, yeah, that's the game I'm going to be talking about, so hope you enjoy, there's not much else to say, and for the final time, let's look at a Tekken game, let's look at Tekken 8. It's safe to say Tekken 7 was a massive success. It sold over 2 million copies in its first two months on sale, and as of 2022, has sold over 10 million copies, making it the most successful game in the series history. It really did save the series, and with little to no budget as well, I can only imagine what a modern Tekken game with a decent budget could look like. And the TiVo in 2022, Namco revealed. Well, they revealed an update for Tekken 7, which ended with this. It was a massive reveal and we all knew what was coming next, and over the next year and a half we'd get more and more info about Tekken 8, with some great trailers and great character reveals. But the wait wouldn't be too long, sometimes it felt like an eternity waiting for a Tekken game to release after seeing the first trailer. Like I was in school when the Tekken 7 trailer dropped, and by the time I played it I was out of school and working, but there was only about a year and a half wait between the EVO reveal and the console release in January of this year. I've spoken about the FMV opening in every Tekken game, and I think I know what separates the good and the bad. And Tekken 8 definitely falls in with the good. It reminds me a lot of Tekken 5's sparking intro, with the song being equal parts cringy and a banger. And the visuals are there to match. It mainly focuses on the massive roster of characters, showcasing many of them in the intro, while also focusing on the story and the battle between Kazuya and Jin. After the last two numbered entries in the series having lacklustre intros, it's so good to see an epic intro to start the game off, and something that I watch every time I start the game up. A 
After the disappointing amount of game modes in Tekken 7, I'm happy to say Tekken 8 fixes it with 9 modes altogether. There's the obvious ones like Arcade Mode and Versus Mode, and also the Return of the Story Mode. And even Tekken Ball makes a return, and it's not even DLC, they just put it in free of charge. A new mode they added is Arcade Quest, it's like its own story mode, it sees you make an avatar and travel through different arcades, slowly working your way up the ranks. It's a fun little distraction, but I'll be honest, I never really paid attention to the story, but the mode itself is fun, and also doubles as a tutorial mode. The online obviously has a lot going on, it all revolves around the Tekken Fight Lounge, a place where you can take your avatar around and interact with other players, play in ranked matches and quick matches, and the online is brilliant. For someone like me who is a bit of a casual, I still managed to have a lot of fun playing it, and when it first released back in January I couldn't put it down for about a week. That probably explains the gap between my Tekken 4 and Tekken 5 videos. And the last mode I want to talk about is obviously the story mode. In my first thoughts video I said, so yeah, when it comes to the Dark Awakens, the story mode, I've already completed it and I can say it's it's decent, it's better than the Tekken 7 one, I think there was a lot more going on in this game, but I think that was just recency bias. Since then I've went back and played the Tekken 7 story mode, and I think 7's just Nixie. I think it has a lot more memorable moments, that's not to say Tekken 8's is bad, it's really good, I just wish there was a few callbacks in it like Tekken 7's. But 8 has its own memorable moments, like this little callback to the Tekken Force mode, and also the part where you get to pick which character to use in the actual tournament. The story mode is just as good as the previous one in terms of its runtime and gameplay, but I think I still prefer Tekken 7's mode. Tekken 8 fixes a lot of what was wrong with Tekken 7, and that starts with the amount of game modes it has, bringing back fun modes like Tekken Ball and a whole new way to play arcade and ghost battle. Tekken 8 has a lot to get stuck into. I'm not too sure how much time passes between the end of Tekken 7 and the start of 8. It seems it's only been a few days or weeks since the end of the last game. So what happened at the end of the last game? Well, Kazuya and Heihachi had their final battle, which saw Kazuya finally defeat his father for the last time. And then, you're not going to believe this, he chucked him into an active volcano. Whoa, didn't see that coming. And I think this finally means that Heihachi is finally gone for good. But you know, this is Tekken, he'll probably just wake up at a hospital in Los Santos and keep it moving. Anyway, now that Kazuya has no one standing in his way, he takes complete control over the world, and there's only one person to stop him, that being Jin, and that's who the story revolves around. It's a fun mode to go through with some really entertaining twists and turns, I'm not going to spoil the whole story, but it's good fun, almost has an Avengers Endgame feel to it, with most characters teaming up to take down Kazuya, as he gets more and more powerful, whilst Jin tries to control his devil Jean, whilst just whinging the whole time. Yeah, I've never really been the biggest fan of Jin, as you can probably tell. But saying that, the build up to the final fight, the call back to Tekken Force, and the involvement of a lot more characters in the story as a whole, definitely makes this story a blast to play through. Right then, I thought I'd just come and, and say goodbye before I leave. What do you mean by goodbye? Well, you know, you're done with the, the Tekken series now, so there's no point me being there anymore, so uh, peace. Well, I mean, you showed up for the Saints Row video, so I think people are going to start to expect you in the videos as well. Hold on, that, that wasn't a Tekken game. Well, of course, it's not a Tekken game. Well, you know, there was fighting, I know there were some cars, but they need to spice things up sometimes. That wasn't a Tekken game, seriously. Well, of course, it's not a Tekken game. Well, look, you're going to have to stay around, because people actually like seeing you in these videos, so... You're going to have to stay. What? So I can't leave? I have to be here for the St. Trial series as well? I can't believe this. I was going to Mallorca in two weeks' time. Why would a hot dog need to go on that? Do, do you know what? Never mind. Look, I'll make the St. Trial 2 video after you come back. Is that a deal? All right, and you promise not to make the St. Trial 2 video until I'm back from my holiday. Yeah, go on. Have fun. Just just have fun. All right, then I best get ready for my holiday. Don't want to catch sunburn. I don't want to be burnt, do I? Ah, holiday, fly away, come away, you go on holiday, we go on holiday. Look at that, beautiful. SPF 50 this is. Ah, oh, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Anyway, see you later. Yeah, okay, see you, see you in a bit. Fucking bastard's got it all over the carpet. So it's time to talk about the gameplay, and Tekken 8 probably has the biggest switch up in gameplay in the series history. 
The only way I can explain it is it feels like a 2D fighter, with all the special moves such as the heat moves and of course the return of the rage art. It's not a bad addition, but I understand people being annoyed with it. It almost feels like a completely different game, but for me the game feels really fun to play and the rounds are way quicker than they have been in the past, which can either be seen as a good thing or a bad thing, depending on who you ask. But it still has that smooth Tekken feel, there are of course the broken characters you're going to come across online, but from my experiences with it so far, they haven't had much to complain about, but at the end of the day, it's a Tekken game. They perfected the gameplay way back in 1998, and ever since then, have just been altering it here and there. And for me personally, I think Tekken 8 has been the most fun I've had playing a modern Tekken game, and I can't really complain about much else. And for me, the gameplay loop makes it super addictive, I can't put it down once I start playing. Yeah, it introduces some things that seem to make the game a lot easier for newcomers, but maybe that's a good thing, bringing new people to the series, who can have a lot of fun playing and join the community. But the second you go online, you definitely see the separation from the newbies and the Tekken veterans. Honestly, for me, Tekken 8 is one of the best games gameplay-wise in the series. Maybe that's just recency bias, or maybe that's what you guys think. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of Tekken 8's gameplay. Of course I need to look at the roster of characters, which I'm sure is going to look completely different in a few years time, so what I'm going to do is try and guess the guest characters who are going to be introduced in the future season passes. So I'm going to go with Lara Croft from Tomb Raider, maybe Kazuma Kiru from Yakuza, maybe Blinks the Cat from Blinks the Time Sweeper, and the Peugeot 206 from Need for Speed Underground 2. For the sake of this video, I'll only be talking about the original launch roster, so no Eddie Gordo I'm afraid. The game released with a roster of 32 characters, which isn't massive, and is actually less than Tekken 7's release roster, but I do think that this one feels a lot more refined, with the returning characters being the best of the best, like Huarang, Chao Yu, Paul, Lily, and other classic fighters, and also seeing the return of Jun in a numbered Tekken game for the first time since Tekken 2. It's a great group of characters, and also, the game only adds three brand new ones, these being Victor Shev... Nah, not even going to try with that one. And he's the leader and founder of the Raven unit, and one of those broken characters I spoke about earlier, who everyone absolutely hates online. Then there's Assassina Mel the coffee woman, yeah, the coffee woman, who wants to use the King of Iron Fist tournament to promote her coffee brand, so she's basically an influencer, but a lot more tolerable than half the shit you see on shit talk. So I'll give her a pass, and then last but certainly not least is of course Rainer probably one of the most important new characters to the series since Jin, as she is the daughter of Hayachi Mishima. Jesus Christ, how many kids does this man have? I think it's time for that Jeremy Kyle clip again. The world will be open. And all three of them offer something unique, and the roster doesn't feel bloated with forgetful characters like in Tekken 6 and 7, and of course the characters can be customised. And man, the customisation in this game is crazy. Just go look up some of the things people have created online, there are some seriously good designs out there, and some ridiculous ones as well. I hope they add a character customization downloader, similar to WWE games, so you can just download the best ones straight to your game, because I'm honestly the most boring person when it comes to original characters. Well, you can say that again. But yeah, I think Tekken 8's launch roster is perfect, and it's only going to go up from here with the future DLC. Right then, stages and music, and I can safely say the stages in this game are some of the best in the series. They're vibrant, unique, even the more generic ones look good, and the music, oh my god, the music is good in this game. If I had to sum it up, I'd say it's a return to form, and thanks to the game being on Unreal Engine 5, they're obviously the best looking stages in the series, and surprisingly, there are no infinite stages in the game, but the wall breaks and ground breaks make a return, to make some of them feel way bigger. And then you have stages like Arena, which are a lot more closed off. The music is great as well, with probably the best soundtrack since Tekken 5 and Dark Resurrection in my opinion. And for the last time, here are some of my favourites. And my favourite has to be Celebration on the Sen, thanks to the visuals being insanely good, with the Eiffel Terror in the background, and all the lights coming on as the stage gets darker, it's one of the best looking stages in the series, oh, and also, the music fucking bangs.
All in all, Tekken 8 definitely is a return to form after what felt like an eternity stuck with boring and lacklustre stages to finally go back to the fun and exciting stages we were used to back in the day. The jukebox mode also makes a return on both consoles and PC, but honestly I didn't feel the need to use it thanks to Tekken 8's banging soundtrack. I think I can easily say that Tekken 8 deserves to be up there with the golden age of Tekken games when it comes to its stages and music. So very similar to Tekken 7, Tekken 8 actually has two boss fights, maybe three if you count the final fight on Arcade Quest, which I'm nowhere near completing, but the two main ones take place in the Story Mode and the Arcade Mode. First up is the final fight in the Story Mode, which I'm not going to spoil some of it, but it's still a fun and challenging final fight. It does a similar thing to Tekken 7's final fight, with a bunch of different phases, even one part in fucking space. It does that whole anime battle thing where one character gets the absolute shit beat out of them and they just manage to keep on getting up like they've just slipped over something and just carry on like it's normal. It's a great ending to the story, especially the use of music and Jin changing fighting styles. The other boss fight is in arcade mode and it's the return of this dickhead, Iggy Azalea. It's a fun little callback and it's not as hard to beat as it was in Tekken 6. And on top of that we get real character endings in character episodes and they're okay. Not the best in the series, but still better than the shit we had in 7. They're what you'd expect from Tekken endings at this point, some comical ones and some more serious ones. Honestly, it's just great to have them back, and unlocking them feels like that old classic Tekken experience we had back in the day. They all have about 5 stages to play through, it's a great addition, and I'm just glad to see the endings back. Tekken 8 does a great job with its boss fights and endings, it just adds much more content to play through, and for someone like me who plays a lot of single player, it's definitely a welcome addition. Tekken 8 has only been out for about 4 months, so while people's opinions have changed in terms of the online play and the release of Tekken Shop and the Fight Pass, for me I still think this is the best Tekken game we've had since the PS2 era, thanks to its massive amount of modes, its great story and of course its brilliant online play. Tekken 8 is definitely a return to form for this legendary series. But that is it for the Tekken series and Tekken 8, obviously I'm going to have to put Tekken 8 in the tier list and it's going to go in A tier. It is a top, top game. I actually really love it. The gameplay mechanics are great. They're fast paced. They're fun to play. The online, obviously, is a 10 out of 10. Well, probably give it an 8 at the mini. But um, yeah, everything about it is just what you want from a Tekken game. The stages are great. The characters are great. The music, everything. They do it perfectly in this game. It's definitely a return to form after Tekken 6 and Tekken 7 being a bit lacklustre. So, honestly, I think it's one of my favourite modern Tekken games. But yeah, that is it for the Tekken series. It's finally over. Um, I might do other Tekken videos in a different format. It won't be retrospectives or anything like that. Because what am I going to do a retrospective on Tekken Advance? I don't think so. But yeah, of course, I am also doing my Saints Row series now. So, I know a lot of you have subscribed or watched these videos because you're Tekken fans. Um, I do appreciate it, but I am moving on to a new series now so if you stay around for that please do that's amazing but um if you don't then i understand it's not everyone's cup of tea going from like a fighting game to a game like saint Row. so um i understand if you don't want to stick around for those but please do i did have a lot of fun making the saint Row one video which will be in the uh the outro screen so if you want to go and check that out or subscribe to the channel for the new ones when they, they arrive but yeah i can't believe it's finally over spoken about every single Tekken game I didn't think I'd ever finish a series on this channel but um here, here we are it's finally over so uh thank you again for watching thank you for getting me over 200 subscribers thank you for watching the Tekken series and thank you for um interacting with the channel the way that you have it's definitely given me the motivation to carry on making these videos so um there's not much else to say other than thanks for watching and as always I'll see you when I see you.